Applications developed for smart devices must be native in order to interoperate with the native features of each device, both in terms of software and hardware, as well as provide the look and feel that users expect from this type of application. Now we will study their conceptual model. Here we can see the four types of screens available. First of all, this screen is an options menu and will be the point of entry of our smart device application. That is to say, when the user opens the application, this screen will be the first one displayed. Next, for example, the user taps on the speakers option and the screen opened will contain a list of speakers. After selecting a speaker and tapping on one of the elements from that list, a screen containing the details of the selected speaker will be opened. Here we're viewing an Android device where this detail screen will be displayed in view mode. This is because we will be simply viewing information about the selected speaker. We will see his or her general information in this info tab. Also, there's another tab called sessions that shows the list of sessions that will be given by that speaker. In this case, there's only one. If there were more, they would be displayed here. This means that the sessions tab will show another list, which will be the detail view panel. In addition, we said that we can also obtain the detail in edit mode in order to edit the speaker's details. We do so when, from the panel that displays the information, we press the button to update the speaker's details, when we want to delete it, or when from the panel that lists the details of all the speakers, we press the plus button in order to add a new speaker. Therefore, this edit screen is another one of the screens available, but it isn't displayed here. We will see it when we open Genexus. In addition, we will be able to use more flexible panels. For example, the tweets panel that we see here. They're similar to web panels, which we can develop from scratch as we want. There, we indicate what we want to have displayed in the screen and how to display it. Meanwhile, the panels at the top that we've just seen are structured panels. They follow a certain logic that belongs to the list and to the detail of the information in each list. The Genexus objects that will allow us to implement these four types of screens are as follows. The dashboard object, which as we said is a menu, The work with for smart devices object, which, as we will see next, unlike the work with for web object, is an object that contains these other two objects, list, detail. And lastly, we have the panels for smart devices, which are similar to web panels. If we say that the work with for smart devices object will contain two other objects in particular, how do we call these objects inside the work with object? The detail will offer two possibilities, call the view or call the edit. We mentioned this just to offer an overview because we will return to this topic later. So don't worry if you don't fully understand it now. The list of a work with object will be invoked with this syntax. We will see that this is the name of the transaction to which the work with object has been applied. And so, with the list method, we will be calling the list, which in this case contains the speakers. If we want to invoke the detail in view mode, we will call it with the detail method, passing it the speaker ID as a key, that is to say, as the primary key that identifies the speaker. And if we want to call the edit screen, that is to say, the screen that allows us to change the speaker's details, we will call it keeping the mode. To insert a new speaker, we will use insert, and to update a speaker's information, we will use update, sending its identifier. To delete it, we will use delete, also sending its identifier. Let's talk a bit about each object before doing it in Genexus. We said that the dashboard is a new object that belongs to the smart device generator. Here, 
we're showing how this object looks in Genexus. So, here we've called it event day and added a group of actions, each one corresponding to these elements here, that is to say, to the menu options or items. Then, each action, such as the speaker's action, will have an associated event responsible for invoking the corresponding object, which in this case is the work with device's speaker object. That is to say, the work with object that implements the work with speaker's object, the list. On the other hand, the action corresponding to the tweets, for example, will have an associated event that will invoke the panel implementing the tweets in the traditional way. In smart device applications, as we will see later, we will have a single point of entry, unlike what happens with web applications. What this means is that since we have a compiled file that is installed on each device, this object will be the application's point of entry. Depending on the type of device, which is the default appearance of this menu? We had said that for the iPhone, for example, this menu is usually displayed as tabs at the bottom according to its guidelines. Also, the first screen corresponding to the first tab is loaded. So here, we're viewing the list of sessions. On the other hand, for Android, the default value is a table. That is to say, the various options are displayed as icons on a table. For the iPad, the default format is a list, a list of options. Pressing any of them will display the selected information or object in the screen on the right. Even though the default options for each one of these platforms are those we have described, we will be able to change these options with a property called Control, which we will see later. That's all for now about the dashboard. We had also said that in the conceptual model, we had the work with for smart devices object. Even though this object can be created in an independent manner, it's not the usual behavior. We usually have a transaction to which this pattern is applied. Once we apply the work with pattern to the transaction's elements, we will see that this work with devices speaker object will be created to implement the various screens we saw at runtime. There will be a little hierarchy tree where each node will implement one of the screens. We will have this list node, which will implement the list screen we see at runtime. And this is how it'll be invoked. There will be a general section showing general information about each one of the list elements. And in this case, about the speakers, so here we will see the general information of the selected speaker. In addition, since the speakers will have a subordinated session speakers table, that is to say, the sessions associated with that speaker, we see a one to n relationship. Each speaker will be able to participate in n sessions. A section or session node will be automatically added here to implement this panel because Genexus finds its relationship. So it'll show the list of sessions associated with that speaker. This screen will implement this section. Then we have the detail, which will load the info and the sessions tabs every time it's invoked, with this detail method sending it the speaker ID. Now let's see some of this in Genexus. We will see that this list node implements the list screen. When we click on this node, this screen will be displayed. Here's where it's programmed. As we can see, the list is programmed through a grid. On the left is the speaker's photo, and on the right is the speaker's full name and the name of the company he works for. So, 
Here we're seeing how Genexus automatically implemented this list. Because it's a grid, n lines will be loaded. On the other hand, if we open the general section, we see the information displayed inside the info tab. The speaker's photo, full name, company, country, and his resume. Here is where this screen is programmed. This is the view of this information. Here, with these buttons, we will be able to access the edit mode. We will see this later. So, if we select the section below, we see that here is where this other tab is programmed. It will also be a grid showing information about the sessions associated with the speaker. There's a room photo, the place where the session will be held, the session's name, and the time. This will be automatically implemented by Genexus, as we said, because it finds a table directly subordinated to the table to which the work with object is applied. These are the related sections. If there were more associated tables, there would be more tabs displayed here. As we said, when we're viewing a speaker's information, we can update his details by pressing the button up here. We can change any of his details. Where is this screen implemented? It's implemented in the general section. In this combo here, opened by Genexus. This means that the general section will have two possible screen layouts the one displayed when we select Edit, and the one displayed when we select View, as we've seen before. So what is displayed to the user and how it's displayed is implemented here. Lastly, we have panels for smart devices. These are panels that we developed from scratch, because Genexus will not initialize anything for us. Here we see that the panel to show tweets has been implemented from scratch by adding a grid to that panel's layout with variables. These variables will belong to an SDT that will be loaded by accessing an API, an external service from Twitter that will return the tweets, as we will see later on. What's interesting about these panels is that they are very similar to web panels. Later on, we will talk about their differences with web panels regarding the use of events, but at first, we can consider them as web panels.